edition of Piano X, I'm talking to you about how these patterns, so music falls into patterns. So when I'm playing the simple sonata number one in C by Mozart, it's a pattern. It's, it's like a building that's getting built where there's a pretty solid foundation with this ostinato bass. And all these structures on that foundation, the first floor, the second floor, building on top of it. This beautiful building in James Hilton, for example, in his book Lost Horizon, uh, quotes the High Lama as saying Mozart builds a building which is so beautiful uh, and yet refined and austere. It's not overdone, it's not underdone. Um, think about this pattern forming itself on the brain. Now, what makes the brain function in such a way that if I were to transpose, so if I instead of playing it on the key that I was playing, I shift it by one note and I make it or if I shift it down and make it on each key keep transposing this from key to key to key to key it's just the brain and it's various different parts so recent studies have shown that it's not just the orbitofrontal cortex which is getting affected by music but it's different parts of the music the rhythm in it the structure of it the texture of it each one is getting imprinted on a different part of the brain so the amygdala uh, which is concerned with the set of functions which you see on the screen uh, the uh, corpus callosum which is actually getting larger because of musical training all of these are getting affected and this pattern recognition is allowing the brain to imprint that pattern on whichever other key it sees it's almost like you've fed in a typeset with a set of alphabets uh, and you can feed in different sorts of inks you can put blue ink or you can put red ink or you can pla put black ink but it's going to print exactly the same thing and as you ponder on this, let me continue playing Mozart. Brains, music and pattern recognition happens to be one of the first and foremost cognitive associations between the purest of art forms and the human brain.